Ladies and gentlemen, I would request that you uh, remain standing for the opening prayer, led by the Reverend Dr. Hidechuk, Director of the United Center for Theological Studies, followed by a blessing by Elder Lavinia Brown. Let us pray. God of, God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom we are guided by light, shaped by truth, emboldened by justice. Bless these graduates as they now have completed their study, having successfully earned their diploma and are being sent back into the, into the world. We thank you for those who taught them and worked beside them and all who supported them and loved them along the way. Walk with these graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Lift their anxiety, shape their confusion of purpose, strengthen their many talents and skills, instill in them confidence in your future that their energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people. Bless those we honor this afternoon thanking them for using their gifts to make a world a better place than they found it. Strengthen them and impart them with hope for the world so they continue to illumine the world with imagination, shape the world with their curiosity, and embrace the world with love and compassion. Bless this university, its administration, faculty, staff, and board for their energy and wisdom put forth to give form and breath to the mission of this place. God be with us through this day and these days that follow, in the moments that bring joy and those that bring sorrow, helping us to recall at day's end one gift, one benefit, for which we are thankful. Amen. Ublukun, good afternoon. Thank you to the University of Winnipeg for having me here to say the prayer in my language. My language is Inuktitut, and I like to say congratulations to all the graduates and to your families, your community, and the university, and everything that belongs to the university. I'd like to ask that every one of you pray in your own way because we all come from different faith, different religion. I respect you all. Each and every one of you in here is creators, people. And in our language we say, Inuit, that's you guys. Inuit means people. And for me, singular, Inuk is one person. I'm Inuk. If you're gonna to refer to yourself as one person, you say, I'm Inuk. So you go to Nunavut, you go tell them, I'm Inuk. <laughs> Every one of you can say that. You won't be wrong. And if they contest you or question you, you say, Lavinia Brown told me. <laughs> because you won't be wrong, that's what it means. So we learn something every day. And the universities, the institution, colleges teaches us great things. And we have more to learn. Today mark the 100th convocation. Let's aim for another 100 years. See what we come, with, come up with in those years. Because 100 years ago, those people had a dream. They had vision. They bring us to this level today. We honor them. We honor the people behind us, the Chandlers, the President, everybody here and down there. So I'm going to open now by saying the prayer in Inuktitut. Ho yanna ming nunaliokti. 
Nuna Lyote, Iling Nun, took Sapon. Iling Nun Sapon. Igwin Anga Yugavin. Igwin Pio Yugavin. Igwin Naglin Yugavin. Ilikun, Kisiane, Ayungipon. Ugagun, Tasio Taulaumeta. Amado, Taqua, Inokotitin, Sai Martilaumikin. Taqua, Ilinea, Nitikuli, Salma Givapun, Ayungipun. Aleane. Ika yokti kanong nea lang aptigo, nuna yokti piu yu gavin. Amalo taiko an nea rahtun ubalunen ayok si simayun tuksiu ti babun. Ili kukisi ane ayung inapta, nuna yokti piu piu yu gavin. Amalo kaya bunga ilak akso oro amata sa imatilaukin tamapta ino yu tigon ino kati itsa laukta. Kaya nami nuna yokti. Thank you. Creator. I want to thank uh, Dr. Hitchuk and Elder Brown for their prayers and for the bestowing upon all of us here uh, to become Inuit. So, Next trip to Nunavut, uh, we all know exactly sort of what our identity is. So, now would you all be please be seated? Mr. Chancellor, uh, distinguished guests, members of the graduating class, families, colleagues, and friends of the University of Winnipeg, I have the great honor to declare open this 100th convocation of the University of Winnipeg. And I would like to begin by welcoming a special guest, the Honorable Dr. James Allen. As of five hours ago, the new Minister of Education and Advanced Learning who has joined us for today's ceremony and will bring greetings on behalf of the province of Manitoba. Dr. Allen is known by many for his commitment to education over the years. It's a delight to have him with us and we feel honored, Dr. Allen, that this is your first public presence since being made minister. Please welcome the new minister of learning and education. Well, uh, thank you. I, I, I'm honored to be here today and to bring greetings on behalf of Premier Selinger and all my colleagues in the government uh, of Manitoba. I'm especially honored to be here to celebrate this fantastic achievement that all of you have accomplished here during, with your hard work. Very honored to be here during the 100th anniversary of the University of Winnipeg, an august and esteemed institution that I had to, actually had the pleasure of teaching part-time here for six or seven years, uh, not so long ago. And of course, I'm, I'm greatly honored to be here during Dr. Axworthy's last uh, term during his tenure as president of the Year University. And I wish you would join me right now just to give him a great big round of applause for the work that he does. Um, Today uh, is all about you folks and all of the hard work and, and all of the blood, sweat and tears that goes into uh, graduating. I have three degrees so I can appreciate all that you've gone through. It's also a day to pay tribute to, to those who've supported you, your family and friends who are looking on and been with you every step of the way. It's an opportunity to acknowledge the faculty and the tremendous work that they do day in, day out in the classrooms of this university. It's an opportunity to pay tribute to the uh, president and the administration and the senior executive team who work also every day to ensure the quality of your education. And then finally, it's an opportunity to acknowledge the partnership between you and the government of Manitoba in ensuring that you've had an accessible, affordable education while at the same time, at the same time ensuring the quality of your ed education, always aspiring toward excellence in whatever we do. Now, Convocations are milestones, they, they mark the passage of time, they're stepping stones to on to something else for, for the vast majority, if not all of you. 
but more than that, they also provide you with an invisible badge of citizenship that I want you to take very seriously. You're going to go out into the world here and we want you to do well professionally and have a great family life and all that kind of thing, but we also want you to go out and be active citizens in the community that you live in. There's a community club, a hockey team, a soccer team, a ballet group, all kinds of arts endeavors requiring your skills and your expertise in if the province of Manitoba is to excel in the years ahead and to keep growing and developing, we need to build citizen capacity and you have all earned the badge of citizenship here today. So what I want to say to you just in conclusion is uh, go out, enjoy today, enjoy your life yet to come, it's very exciting. Don't think that the future lies ahead in the future, your future is happening right here today. I want you to go out and get involved in your community and then go out, change the world, make it a better place. Thank you so much for having me here today. Well, thank you very much, uh, Minister Allen. And let me just say by way of footnote that we have about eight months to do damage together. So I look forward uh, to that opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> I would now like to introduce to you and offer a warm welcome to, to Daniel Vandell. City Council of St. Boniface Ward, who will bring greetings on behalf of His Worship Mayor Sam Case. Councillor Vandell. Thank you so much. It's a uh, distinguished guest, graduates. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here representing the City of Winnipeg and Mayor Sam Case for this uh, very, very important occasion. It's a great pleasure to be here in the city of Winnipeg for this important occasion. Today is a day of recognition and celebration as we honor the hard work and sacrifice of this year's graduating class. This success comes through personal sacrifice, this success comes through perseverance, and this success, your success, comes through an incredible amount of hard work, and I congratulate you all for that. It's also an important day for parents, for, for partners, for family, for friends. This achievement is one that is never managed by the students themselves. It's managed with the support of those closest to them and to us. And, to the, and today, this celebration uh, is very much, uh, uh, you are very much a part of this celebration also. I also want to mention the uh, tremendous work uh, of the University of Winnipeg over the past 100 years. Uh, the work that the university has accomplished, educating and nurturing young minds over the last century, is instrumental to our city and can never, ever be taken for granted. Education is, as it always has, been a force for social change, a force for social good, a force for economic prosperity, and empowerment for the individuals, for our great city, and for our society. We, as civic leaders, must continue to do all things necessary uh, to continue to strengthen the relationships between civic government, between cities and universities, and to ensure that uh, our universities continue to produce intelligent, educated, and empowered graduates who are willing, ready, willing, and able to make our communities better communities. Without further ado, on behalf of the City of Winnipeg, I congratulate all the graduates here this afternoon uh, many thanks. We are very pleased uh, this afternoon to be joined by a number of distinguished platform guests, many who have come particularly to help us honor and celebrate this 100th convocation. And I want to introduce them to you at this time, and I'd ask that each person stand as I call his or her name, and I really request that you hold your applause till we've finished all the introductions. Uh, beginning with the fourth row, Mr. Colin Russell, Registrar, University of Winnipeg. Mr. Michael Emsley, Associate Vice President, Finance and Operations. Dr. Glenn Bergeron, Associate Dean of Kinesiology. Dr. Annabelle Mays, Fellow of United College. Dr. Mary Lou McFedrin, the past honorary degree recipient. Dr. Mohinder Dillon, past honorary degree recipient. Dr. Robert Kosminski, past honorary degree recipient. Mr. Ray Taylor, fellow of the University of Winnipeg. Mr. 
Matt Watts, fellow of United College, Dr. Dean Peachy, acting principal, Global College, Dr. Mary Warmbrod, Director, Masters of Marriage and Family Therapy, Mr. Brian Daly, President and CEO of the University of Winnipeg Foundation, Bishop Don Phillips, Reverend Stefan Johansson, Past President, University of Winnipeg Alumni Association, Ms. Megan Fultz, President, University of Winnipeg Students Association, Ms. Leslie Erniak, Campus Sustainability Award recipient. In the third row, starting on your right, Dr. Donna Burke, President, Booth University College. Ms. Deborah Young, Executive Lead, Indigenous Achievement, the University of Manitoba, on behalf of President Dr. David Barnard. Ms. Doris Elaine Young, Advisor to the President on Aboriginal Affairs, University College North. Dr. Fiona Green, Associate Dean of Arts. Dr. John Anton, Associate Dean of Education. Dr. Danny Blair, Associate Dean of Science and Principal of the Richardson College for the Environment. Dr. Jerry Buckman, Dean of Menno Simons College. Ms. Jennifer Ratray, Associate Vice President, Indigenous Government and Community Affairs. Mr. Robert Ben, Dean of the Collegiate. Ms. Deb Ratty, Executive Director, General Counsel Office, University Secretary, 100th Convocation Award recipient. Ms. Carol Wiley, Chair of the Board of Regents from 2004 to 26, 100th Convocation Award recipient. Dr. Frank Hector, Chair of the Board of Regents, 93 to 2002, 100th Convocation Award recipient. Ms. Janet Walker, Advanced Gifts and Consultant, University of Winnipeg Foundation, 100th Convocation Award recipient. And Ms. Susan Thompson, Founding President and CEO, University of Winnipeg Foundation, also a 100th Convocation Award recipient. Mr. Philip Baker, Director of the Faculty of Education's Access Programs and recipient of the Marsha Hannon Award for Community Awareness. Ms. Jerry Zacharias, Director of Model School, recipient of the Claire Atchison Award for Excellence in Community Service. Elder Lavinia Brown. Second row, again from your right, Dr. Joel Kettner, Dr. Mavis Reimer, Dean of Graduate Studies, Dr. Glenn Moulison, Dean of Arts, Dr. Kenneth McCluskey, Dean of Education, Dr. David Fitzpatrick, Dean of Kinesiology, Dr. James Curry, Dean of Science, Dr. Gino DeStasio, Associate Vice President of Research and Director of the IUS, Institute of Urban Studies, Mr. Bill Ballon, Vice President of Finance and Administration, Chief Administrative Officer, Mr. Jeremy Reed, Senior Executive Officer, Advisor to the President, Mr. Sherman Kreiner, Vice President of Student Life and Managing Director of the University of Winnipeg Community Renewal Corporation and the 100th Convocation Award winner. Ms. Laura Rebsky, Vice President, Human Resources, Audit and Sustainability. Dr. Linwood DeLong, Acting Dean of the Library. Mr. Richard Graydon, Fellow of the United College, 100th Convocation Award recipient. Mr. Brian Daly, President and CEO, University of Winnipeg Foundation. Dr. Reverend Hidichuk, Executive Director of the United Center for Theological Studies. Dr. Bruce Daniels, candidate for admission to Fellowship of United College. Dr. Patrick Dean, President, Vice Chancellor of McMaster University, Acting President of the University of Winnipeg 2003-04, and a Convocation Award recipient. Dr. Donald Shields, accepting the Chancellor of Marriages in honor of the late Dr. Carol Shields, Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg from 96 to 2000. Dr. Sanford Riley, candidate for Chancellor Emeritus. Ms. Pamela McLeod, member of the Board of Regents. Dr. John Bullman, Chancellor Emeritus. Sir Robert Silver, the Chancellor. Dr. Neil Besner, Provo, Vice President, Academic and International. Dr. Robin Farquhar, candidate for President Emeritus. And Dr. Marsha Hannon, President 8999, candidate for President Emeritus. This is Shirley Duckworth, accepting the President Emeritus in honor of the late Dr. Henry Duckworth. Dr. James Allen, already introduced as the new Minister of Education and Advanced Learning, and Councillor Dan Mandel, Winnipeg City Council. Would you please acknowledge these platform guests? I'd also like to recognize and acknowledge the presence of special guests, the platform party, and members of the Board of Regents who are seated in the audience on the left side of the graduates. I'm also pleased to welcome Dr. Gerald Farthing, Deputy Minister of Advanced Education and Literacy, 
as well as Mr. Paul Vogt, the former clerk of the Cabinet Secretariat, as well as the moderator of this morning's discussion panel on the future of higher education in Manitoba. Please join me in thanking them for their visit this afternoon. And seated in front of me and serving as marshals are members of our faculty who are the fount of wisdoms, who exercise humor and judgment and generosity of spirit and have contributed so much to the growth and academic success of the graduates that we are honoring today. I ask you to join me in acknowledging these very gifted and dedicated people. And they are joined by many members of our staff and administration and alumni who are here to share in your celebration and who play essential roles in making the university a very vibrant, humane place. And I ask you once more to join me in thanking their contributions as well. Uh, as a further note, we are going digital this afternoon. Uh, Winnipeg is, University of Winnipeg is proud to provide a live webcast of the ceremony for all the family and friends who are unable to join us. It will also be available for replay at a small price. So, welcome all of those who are viewing this ceremony online, and we encourage all of those in attendance or watching online to send a special message to the graduates today on Twitter at hashtag U-W-P-G. We really have gone upscale on these matters. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the time I get, have a chance to say a few remarks to the graduate students and to welcome everyone to this convocation that honors their presence and their graduation from this university. As we've mentioned, this is a special time, that it is the 100th convocation since the University of Winnipeg became an independent university here in the downtown part of Winnipeg. A couple of small anecdotes to start those proceedings. One of today's graduates, Alistair Brown, is receiving a degree in biochemistry, is the great, great grandson of Reverend Dr. John M. King, who was professor of theology and the very first principal of Manitoba College beginning in 1883. For those of you who are, are steeped and versed in matters of University history, Manitoba College was our founding college in a small house up in the northeast portion of Winnipeg. And from there, it became merged with Wesley College, and then United College, and then in 1967, became the University of Winnipeg. It was the first institution of higher learning in the city of Winnipeg and the province, and the first graduating class, you can put yourself in comparison, were 12 members. so. We've come a long way uh, in that period of time. So it just shows that there is an incredible sort of reaching across the span of time and the decades and the generations to show the continuity that this university has been able to provide. And as a further note to that, uh, if you are somewhere in the vicinity of the new recreation complex being built on the Young Street side, next week you will see a truck full of stones they are the sort of foundation stones of Manitoba College that have been rescued and restored, brought to our own campus, and will form part of the exterior of the new recreation complex. So in both the educational and personal and human sense, as well as in the sense of Mother Earth, we are continuing this continuity of, of the university's tradition. I'd also like to share with you a very short piece of history, which I think describes why we're treating this convocation as the special incident it was. This is an important uh, message for students because we're always talking about the role that students play not only in their studies, but also in shaping and defining the institution that they're part of. Back in the 1960s, and I speak from 
personal knowledge, being a student at the time. The system of ed higher education in Manitoba was a group of affiliate colleges, United College, St. John's, St. Paul's, St. Andrews, most of them located in the downtown part of Winnipeg. There was then a move, I'm not sure who started it, to have the colleges move out to the Fort Garry campus uh, in the southern part of the city. Students at the time decided that they wanted to stay downtown. They thought that it was important that there be a place of learning in the central part of the city. So they passed motion and were able to convince the Board of Regents and the faculty and the administration that alone and solo, United College should stay in its present location, which has expanded somewhat since then. The second and perhaps more, more pertinent issue is that a few years later, when there was a major debate about the way in which the governance of universities would take place in the province, again, it was the student association uh, that led the separatist movement to ensure that not only would United College stay downtown, it would become an independent university. There was a dramatic incident in Convocation Hall where a major debate between the, the pros and cons, the advocates of one side or the other, took place with some stacked rafters of students ready to make that choice. Uh, I would like to mention that the, the candidate who was leading the charge to become the head of the student association at the time, to Joe Stern, is with us today, and uh, it was they who authored the motion passed by five votes that the student association would withdraw from the University of Manitoba's association. And that started the ball rolling, and within a matter of two and a half years, we were an independent university. So there is a thing called student power, and you can make it work, and you can dedicate it, and you can take satisfaction that you and your following generations have always played an incredible role in determining what the nature of higher education for generations to follow. In your graduating class, just think you'll be joining some 46,000 other students who have graduated from that first convocation. At the time, the student body was about 2,400. It's now over 10,000. Not that numbers necessarily mean a lot, but it does reflect what is important, and that is the incredible diversity of our student body. I'm sure students of that first class would not recognize just the way in which the kind and caliber and character and background of so many students, old, young, different countries, and different areas of interest and appreciation have really blossomed and helped reset on an almost generational basis of the nature and concept. But they've always held, I think the crucial thing, I've always held to the fundamental mission about the learning that goes on and the need to provide a proper educational opportunity for students to make choices that fit their tastes, their intellectual power, their feeling of vocation. That has been a constant, a consistent sort of element of who we are. And so as a downtown university, now with uh, several new faculties, kinesiology, education, business, uh, a graduate studies program, now numbering in four or five hundred, a whole new series of programs and centers that are both global in their reach as well as locally engaged to involve students in our neighborhood. We're clearly a different place than we were a hundred convocations ago. But I think the basic fundamental central elements and principles are still retained. And that tradition is one that we are honoring today. The way of which we are doing it is to provide special tribute and appreciation, thanks, to individuals who have provided leadership and direction over those years, who have been instrumental in helping to define, uh, in both in good times and bad times, where the university could go. One of our most important 
honors that we can provide is the bestowing of the title emeritus, which today we'll provide for both recent presidents and chancellors. Some are posthumous, others are with us on the stage today. And this is a recognition of a distinguished service after one has retired from a position within the institution but whose legacy and contribution considers on. The milestone we're celebrating, it's clear that we could not have reached where we are today without the forceful commitment and leadership these people provide. We'll be conferring titles of President Emeritus and posthumously on Dr. Constance Rook, served as president from 99 to 2002, to Dr. Marsha Hannon, who served from 98 to 89, and Dr. Robin Farquhar from 81 to 89, and to Henry Edsman Duckworth, who served as Winnipeg's second president, 71 to 81. And we'll also be conferring the title of Chancellor Emeritus on H. Sanford Riley, who served as chancellor from 2000 and 2009, and posthumously on Carol Shields, who served as our chancellor from 96 to 99. There are other people who could have been given similar honors, uh, but these are a representative and distinguished group who I think stand for the kind of principle and commitment and hard work that this 100th convocation is here to recognize. And around this convocation, we have provided an opportunity to have serious discussions about the future of higher education. Uh, attended well first yesterday on a major circle to look at Aboriginal education, and this morning to enjoin on the question of the future of higher education in this province, particularly with the University of Winnipeg. The Board of Regents also decided that there were a group of recipients, volunteers, staff, administrators, faculty members who, at a time when the university faced some very serious difficulties, and all institutions do that, that the bridge was built by a very sort of singular group of people who rose to the challenge to ride out the storm, to build a new bridge, and to give us the foundation upon which we've been able to go from strength to strength in successive years. And I will have the honor of uh, presenting them to you today. They received their 100th Convocation Awards last night. And just to complete sort of the list of those who we honor, Bruce Daniels, a teacher at the university in history for 31 years, will be honored with the fellowship in United College, which is, again, the highest honor his peers can provide uh, for the kind of excellence he brought along with a wicked wit uh, along the way. We're also recognizing Michael Newell Mayan as our distinguished alumni, a young man who came from the deserts of Sudan as one of the lost boys, came to this university, formed an association, and since then has dedicated himself to working in the interests of those who are coming from those countries which are in turmoil and war. Phil Baker from the Faculty of Education will receive the Marsha Han Award for his work as the director of the access programs in the Faculty of Education. Leslie Iriniuk will be given a Campus Sustainability Award for developing her 100% consumer non-paper award on campus, which is a big deal, by the way. And Jerry Zacharias will receive the Claire's Atchison Award for Excellence in Community Service for being the director of University of Winnipeg's Model School, where she works 24 hours a day, and which, by the way, at the uh, most recent count, the students of that are now receiving a 98% graduation rate when most of them were out of school four or five years ago. So I hope that uh, this celebration you will all enjoy, take part in, learn from, and become engaged in what a university can do and what it can mean. Each of these individuals represents a long-lasting impact, and I think it's important for all of us to understand what we would be without this kind of dedication. And that's what education brings. There's debates, as we heard this morning, about value of university education versus other options and choices. I don't think there's any doubt it's the best investment you'll ever have made, not just in terms of where you will go and what you will do, 
but who you will become and the kind of values that you will carry with you. That long tradition that we talked about that goes back to Manitoba College in 1873 still lives in the graduating class of 2013. And so my message is that I pay tribute to you, good wishes, and just remind of a story that is told by Jonathan Lair in a book he wrote called Radical Hope, which is how the Crow people, one of our First Nations in mid-North America, were facing what they thought was an impossible change. The Europeans were coming and the buffalo were disappearing. What was the answer of the Crow people? It was education. They decided to learn, to get skills, to adapt. And their chief at the time, Plenty Coup, said, we have a traditional way of going forward. I think that's a good, significant motto for this university. We have a traditional way of going forward. And I hope all of you in this graduating class will be part of that movement. Thank you very much. I would now like to call upon Dr. John Bullman, Chancellor Emeritus, to present Dr. Sanford Riley and Dr. Carol Shields to Chancellor Robert Silver for acceptance to the rank of Chancellor Emeritus. Would Chancellor Silver, Chancellor Emeritus Bullman, and Dr. Riley please come forward? Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present H. Sanford Riley to be conferred as Chancellor Emeritus. Mr. Riley has served you Winnipeg in numerous capacities and with great distinction. He served as you Winnipeg's sixth chancellor for three full terms, 2000 to 2009, during which time the University of Winnipeg underwent remarkable growth and development. Mr. Riley was the founding chairperson of the University of Winnipeg Foundation Board of Directors, which launched and oversaw the most ambitious capital campaign in University of Winnipeg's history. It raised an unprecedented $135 million and allowed for a campus, campus resonance. Mr. Riley's commitment to the University of Winnipeg has also been personal. His generous donation established the H. H. Sanford Riley Fellowship in Canadian history, and in June 2009, the H. Sanford Riley Center for Canadian History opened, bringing together associations and organizations committed to researching the history of Canada from indigenous and, and colonial times to the present. In May 2013, the important oral, oral history center took root. In 2009, Mr. Riley was awarded an honorary Doctor of Laws for his ongoing and dedicated support to the University of Winnipeg and the broader community. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, I request that you confer H. Sanford Riley with the honor of Chancellor Emeritus for his continued commitment and dedication to the University of Winnipeg. <clears throat> By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, I admit you, H. Sanford Riley, to the rank of Chancellor Emeritus with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. I've been told to be brief. Um, first of all, I want to thank the, uh, the Senate and the Board of Regents for this wonderful honor. Um, I really appreciate uh, the recognition of the effort that I've put into the university, it's a, it's, but it's been a lo labor of love, made so, especially so by the people that I've met over the years at the university. Many, many people in many, many places uh, I've worked with and enjoyed their company and enjoyed the satisfaction of working towards what I think is a really important institution in this country. Uh, I want to mention a couple of them today because they really made, uh, have made my experience with the university very special. First of all, I want to mention Dr. Nolan Riley and Dr. Alexander Freund from the History Department, who took my um, 
interest and passion for Canadian history and my idea that we could help it and made it real. Thank you, Nolan, very much. And I want to thank all the people who worked with me on the University of Winnipeg Foundation, but in particular three people, Brian Daly, the current uh, president, Janet Walker, who's being honored today and whose idea it was, and most importantly, Susan Thompson, who for 10 years really drove the foundation to the capital campaign and, and uh, is uh, a remarkable supporter for the university. And finally, uh, not finally, but I also want to acknowledge Dr. Axworthy. Um, Lloyd and I have known each other for many years in many different, in many different ways. It, it has been the most unusual and enjoyable and wild ride uh, as, as we took Lloyd's ideas and worked with them and created what I think is one of the great university campuses now in Canada. It's so exciting to come down to the university and see the, uh, the new field house. It's, uh, it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful asset. But mostly I want to acknowledge all the students. For nine years I had the pleasure of greeting literally thousands of graduates as they received their degrees. Um, it was, for me, the greatest pleasure of being Chancellor because every year I got to sit up here and see the face of, new Can uh, of, of, of the new Canada going across the stage. And it filled me with confidence and it filled me with hope and it filled me with excitement as I saw all the young people who came through and I've seen many of them gone on to do very wonderful things in their lives already. So I want to thank all of you graduates here today for allowing me to be part of your special day. I'm going to enjoy watching you come forward and receive your degrees from Chancellor Silver. Um, and I also I really appreciate that you and your families would let me be part of this special day for you, and I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you. I would now like to call upon Chancellor Emeritus Bullman to present the Chancellor Emeritus Award to Carol Shields. Donald Shields will be receiving that honor on her behalf. Donald? Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present the late Carol Shields to be conferred as Chancellor Emeritus posthumous. Carol was an award-winning author, playwright, poet, and literary critic. She was well loved on campus when she served as the University of Winnipeg Chancellor from 1996 to 1999. Carol was a hands-on chancellor who could be seen on campus in countless classes and committees, readings, and symposia. She wore her love for Winnipeg on her sleeve and was a tireless advocate for the university. Carol was committed to every facet of this institution. Her commitment to help is reflected in her establishment of the Ines Selgren Bursary in honor of her mother. This bursary is given annually to a single parent entering any full-time program of study at the University of Winnipeg. After her passing, University of Winnipeg unveiled Larry's Bench in her honor, a place of respite and reflection in the heart of the campus, named fondly after the protagonist in one of her novels. In memory of Carol, the University of Winnipeg hosts the Carol Shields Writer in Residence Program that was established with a Shields family donation of $100,000. The program is another aspect of Carol's legacy. It supports emerging writers, mentors students, and encourages members of the writing community who played such a large part in her life. Carol Shields passed away on July the 6th, the year 2003. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate, I request that you confer the late Carol Shields posthumously with the honor of Chancellor Emeritus for her love and commitment to the University of Winnipeg.
By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, I admit Carol Shields to the rank of Chancellor Emeritus Postumus with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. I accept with great pleasure this honor for my late wife. I just want to say two things very quickly. When Carol graduated many years ago in Indiana, she and her sorority girls decided to come to convocation nude under their robes. <laughs> Secondly, I can't... <laughs> Sake of a missing part of that tribute. The missing part is that Carol had a personal life. She was the mother of five children and the grandmother of 12 children. And I know she would feel that I didn't play a proper representation of who she was without mentioning that personal side of her existence. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Don. I want to say with the new minister on the stage, I'm not sure I can publicly or personally endorse the practice established by our chancellor as she was on the way. <laughs> but she was a great lady. I would now like to ask Chancellor Robert Silver to come forward to confer the rank of President Emeritus upon Dr. Robin H. Farquhar, Dr. Marsha Hannon, Dr. Constance Rook, and Dr. Henry Duckworth. Well, I should, accepting on behalf of Dr. Duckworth is Mrs. Shirley Duckworth, and Ms. Janet Walker will be accepting the honor on behalf of the late Constance Rook, whose family was not able to be in attendance today. <clears throat> it is my privilege as Chancellor to confer upon Dr. Robert H. Farquhar the honor of President Emeritus. Dr. Farquhar was the third President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg. He was a passionate about the role of U of W as an urban university. Throughout his tenure, he was committed to involving the university in local issues and events, recruiting more students and developing programs that would serve as many of the community as possible. Dr. Farquhar was a tireless ambassador who helped build the reputation and profile of the University of Winnipeg through his strong relationships with the community, government, and business deal leaders. In typical diplomatic fashion, he success successfully obtained grants to address underfunding issues in a time of heavy fiscal restraint. In 1989, the Board of Regents established the Robert, Robin H. Farquhar Award for Excellence in contributing to self-governance in recognition of Dr. Farquhar's commitment to maintaining the autonomous nature of the university. Dr. Farquhar's academic career has included roles as Dean of Education at the University of Saskatchewan, President of Carleton University, and President, Professor Emeritus of Public Policy and Administration of Carleton. He has served as chair and president for a variety of educational councils and societies, including the Canadian Bureau for International Education and the Commonwealth Council of Educational Administration. Having authored over 100 published books and art articles, Dr. Farquhar serves as an international consultant for higher education policy and management. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, I'm honored to confer upon you, Dr. Robert H. Farquhar, the rank of President Emeritus with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Well, this is uh, <clears throat> an honor that I treasure very much having checked to make sure that I do have some clothes on under my gown here. 
Um, I, I want to say thank you to the University of Winnipeg, and I, I also uh, want to congratulate the uh, members of the graduating class, uh, not only for successfully completing your demanding studies here and uh, earning degrees that are respected around the world, but uh, also for timing your graduation to coincide with the university's 100th convocation and thereby assuring your places in history. Well done. I'm particularly grateful uh, for, uh, to receive this honor so long after my tenure here as president of the University of Winnipeg. Since that time, I've remained um, interested and tried to remain informed, and I've certainly remained impressed uh, with the progress that the university has made, which I think is, uh, is quite remarkable. And I'm still connected to the university by my honorary membership in the Retirees Association and by the, uh, the award that uh, the board uh, kindly created in my name to celebrate the autonomy of the university. Um, and I'm also connected by that, uh, that great banner behind us, which was designed and uh, constructed by uh, a small group of women leaders in the Winnipeg community under the direction of my wife, Fran, uh, almost a quarter of a century ago, and I thank you for still uh, hanging it, Lloyd. I appreciate that, and I'm sure Fran does too. And now I have a more direct and personal designation that guarantees my continuing membership in the University of Winnipeg community uh, for the rest of my life. And this is very meaningful for me, uh, not only because it acknowledges uh, my service, for, for which I'm humbly appreciative, but also because it renews my connection with uh, an important stage in my life that, uh, I, that I loved, a stage that was highly enjoyable for me, and I'm very thankful for renewing that connection, those memories. My wife and I enjoyed our eight years uh, in this job. We developed many friendships uh, at the university and in the community, several of which remain strong uh, today. It was a time when all three of our daughters undertook their university studies, two of them here at U Winnipeg, uh, from which the benefits are clear in, in the great careers that uh, they're now enjoying, and I'm sure that will be true for all of you who are graduating today as well. This is a city that has a remarkably high quality of life. It's a provincial community that uh, truly values the contribution that higher education makes uh, to its social and cultural and economic development. And having just returned from just Africa just last weekend after five months of uh, engagement there as a strategic advisor for the University of Rwanda, I've got a, a renewed appreciation of how precious our situation here really is, notwithstanding uh, the occasional frustrations that I know uh, my colleagues in this position now uh, face. We're very fortunate to have universities in this country and in this province. We're very fortunate to be associated with the University of Winnipeg. I now have a chance to be associated with it uh, for life. And uh, on behalf of my wife, who was a very large part of uh, my eight years as president here, um, I want to say thank you for that. We'll treasure this continuing association, and I'm grateful to the Senate for enabling it to happen. Thank you very much. It's my great privilege as Chancellor to confer, confer upon, uh, upon Dr. Marsha Hannon the honor of Presi President Emeritus. Dr. Hannon was the fourth President and Vice Chancellor 
of the University of Winnipeg. Among the many notable accomplishments during Dr. Hannon's tenure was the passing of the University of Winnipeg Act, which had been highly sought after ever since the university's inception in 1967. She was also responsible for the opening of both the Bullman Student Center and the Eckhart Gramate Hall. The Marsha Hannon Award for Excellence in Creating Community Awareness was established in Dr. Hannon's honor to recognize her strong belief in the importance of undergraduate level liberal arts and science education. Dr. Hannon's academic work focused on a wide range of subject matters, including philosophies of law and science, feminist theory, epistemology, liberal arts, research, ethics, and politics. Her role as president of the Sheldon Toomer Foundation for Ethics and Leadership reflects her long-standing dedication to the, to the promotion of ethical behavior among the business community. She has earned many grants, awards, and honors, including the induction to, into the Order of Canada and a fellowship in law and philosophy at Harvard University. Throughout her career, Dr. Hannon has been a strong advocate for the growth and development of the University of Winnipeg, and her lasting contribution to the university community, community are still evident today. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, it is my great honor to confer upon Dr. Marsha Hannon the rank of President Emeritus with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. Mr. Chancellor, President Axworthy, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and friends of the University of Winnipeg, families and friends of the graduands, and most especially, members of the graduating class. It is hard to know how properly to thank the university for the wonderful honor that has been bestowed upon me. I'm most grateful not least because I spent 10 of the most interesting and meaningful years of my life serving this university. And I'm pleased to be able to maintain my interest and support. I'm particularly honored to see some, a number of colleagues here this afternoon who shared those 10 years with me. And I want also to congratulate all those being honored at this 100th convocation of the University of Winnipeg. For those of you who are graduating today, this is a very special occasion, as convocation always is. But today in particular, being the 100th convocation of the university will be something you will always remember as your convocation, a landmark for the university and equally a milestone marking your first or perhaps your second convocation maybe for some of you even your third, and representing significant accomplishments for each of you. When I came to the University of Winnipeg in 1989, it was with the knowledge that this university was one of the few universities in Canada truly devoted to offering the highest possible quality of undergraduate education in the arts and sciences. That did not mean it was the only thing we did. But I think it's fair to say that more than for many other Canadian universities, it was the core of who we were. And our graduates were well prepared, both for exciting futures. Our faculty members were and are noted for their devotion, both to first-rate teaching and to excellence in research. And our students have for many years had the benefit of working closely with faculty members on research projects that have provided an important foundation for their next steps. Much has changed in the last 25 years at this university as in nearly all others. Some of these changes stem from economic ups and downs and alterations in funding arrangements. Some from changing in parent changes in parent, student, and societal expectations. 
some from ever more rapid technological development, some from increasing globalization, and some from all of these and others. But I hope that the changes that have occurred and that will occur in future will be carefully thought out, brought about for sound and compelling reasons, and will not fail to honor this university's history and special strengths. In addition to its academic pursuits, I think the University of Winnipeg has been particularly strong in exhibiting a social conscience and in serving its community. And that is another thing that will stay with you as you move on to new challenges. Completing a university degree is no small feat. Students lead busy and often stressful lives, and it is important that the rest of us make it clear that we understand something of the struggles you have faced in order to reach this day of achievement. The complications of juggling multiple responsibilities and the value of the accomplishment. We also recognize the support you have had from families, friends, and faculty members. You move on now to new and interesting challenges, but whatever those challenges, I trust you will meet them with optimism born of already having had considerable success. Of course, we all have our private nightmares. And sometimes no one is more surprised by our triumphs than we ourselves. Recently, I learned of a long retired academic who still has an unpleasant dream, which involves walking into a classroom expected to teach a subject he has never studied and knows nothing about. He dreams that he is, in short, an imposter. Well, if we're lucky, we eventually overcome such insecurities. But if they stick with us, perhaps we can at least learn to deal with them with a measure of humor. After all, even if the authorities were to take away my friend's PhD, he can console himself with the thought that he probably doesn't need it anymore. Beyond your working lives and your relationships, I hope you will remember that despite frequent reinforcement to the contrary, cynicism about the possibility of positive change in the world is not productive. I'm reminded of a sign I once saw which read, persons wishing to advise that it cannot be done will kindly refrain from interfering with those doing it. So I urge you to carry over the best that you know, as many of you already do, from your working lives to your communities. Each of us has a responsibility to contribute what we can to a more civil society. And there are innumerable aspects of our communities that cry out for your involvement. You will be the richer for it, and if each of us does some of it, we may just have a chance to turn some of the negativism cynicism and even violence that are so common in these troubled times into improved communities wherever they may be. Still, even if we accomplish some of these goals, we all know that needs will continue. So I wish for you a lifelong involvement in those pursuits that matter to you and that make for better communities. I congratulate you all and I wish you lives filled with curiosity, creativity, warm friendships, much joy, satisfying work, and the passion to play a role in making the world a better place. Thank you. Now I'll ask uh, Chancellor Silver to present the President Emeritus Award posthumously to Dr. Henry Duckworth, his wife Shirley Duckworth will receive on his behalf. Shirley? It is my great privilege as Chancellor to reconfirm upon Dr. Henry Duckworth the honor of President Emeritus Dr. Duckworth was the second president and vice chancellor of the University of Winnipeg. 
His deep and enduring relationship with the University of Winnipeg dates back to his days as a student in 1932. Dr. Duckworth's distinguished career as a teacher, researcher, and physicist was recognized when, we, when he became Uni Universities of Winnipeg's first Royal Society of Canada Fellow and later Fellow of United College. He was first bestowed with the rank of President Emeritus in 1981 after completing his decade-long tenure as President. In 1984, he received an honorary degree of laws and was an inaugural member of the University of Winnipeg Foundation Board of Directors. Dr. Duckworth had a significant effect on student life that continues to this day. The Duckworth, Duckworth Center, which will house the new Wellness Center, hosts the Westman family, the annual Duckworth Challenge, as well as dozens of community events every year. The beloved Great Rock Climb was his brainchild and continues every year to celebrate endurance, ingenuity, and teamwork. There are several annual student scholarships that carry Dr. Duckworth's name and support. Dr. Duckworth passed away in December 2008 at the age of 93. His legacy at the University of Winnipeg lives on. It is my great honor to reconfirm at this 100th convocation of the University of Winnipeg the conferring of the rank of President Emeritus upon Dr. Henry Edmondson Duckworth with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining for his lifelong dedication and contribution to the University of Winnipeg. I would be remiss if I didn't pay tribute to the university for this wonderful award on behalf of my husband. I had the opportunity to speak, um, to say a tribute to him at the dinner last night, but uh, I just feel that uh, this is a wonderful occasion. My, my husband was here. He would uh, be truly, truly thankful and impressed. So thank you to University of Winnipeg for allowing me to accept this honor on his behalf. And on the behalf of the Duckworth family, I would just like to pay tribute and um, congratulate the University on this 100th convocation. Thank you. It is my great privilege as Chancellor to confirm upon the, doc the late Dr. Constance Rook the honor of President Emeritus Posthumus, and I'll ask Janet Walker to step forward to accept the President Emeritus Hood on behalf of the Rook family who could not be here today. Dr. Rook was President Vice Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg from 1999 to 2002. Her vision for U of W was to engage in the cultural life within the city and to increase involvement with the university and the community at large. She was strongly committed to strengthening ties between the university and the citizens of Winnipeg. Dr. Rook deeply valued the importance of a strong liberal arts and science education and considered this to be U of, U of Winnipeg's greatest asset. She regularly emphasized the importance of getting the message heard by the public and by government. As a dedicated and talented teacher, Dr. Rook was awarded the 3M Teaching Fellowship Award for her generous approach to the sharing of knowledge and her genuine focus on the interests of her students. In addition to her academic career, Dr. Rook was a widely published author and editor. She was a passionate and effective advocate of writers' causes and was co-founder of the Eden Mills Writers' Festival. Dr. Rook passed away in October 2008. And as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, it is now, now my privilege to confer upon Dr. Constance Rook the honor of President Emeritus Posthumus with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining.
I was a colleague of Connie Rook, and I knew her as a passionate, inspired, and quality human being. I am pleased to accept this award on her behalf and on behalf of the Rook family. She was a brilliant writer, and she spent a good deal of her time correcting my grammar. She also wrote a brilliant case for support for the University of Winnipeg. And I'd like to take a moment just to communicate her vision for the university. And that was reflected in the words of Forrester, only connect. And I believe if Connie Rook were here today, her message to you as graduates and to all of you within the university community would be just that, only connect. Thank you. I'd now like to call upon our academic vice president, Provo, Dr. Neil Besner, to present to Dr. Bruce Daniels the fellowship in the United College. Would Dr. Besner and Dr. Daniels please come forward. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present Dr. Bruce C. Daniels for fellowship in United College. Dr. Daniels taught in the Department of History for 31 years. As a compelling and popular instructor, he was recognized with the Clifford J. Robson Award for Excellence in Teaching. And Dr. Daniels was also the very first recipient of the Erica and Arnold Rogers Award for Excellence in Research and Scholarship. He's received numerous research grants from the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council. He's been a Fulbright Fellow, and he's enjoyed a truly distinguished and internationally recognized academic career. As a trusted advisor to the university, Dr. Daniels has served on search committees for president, for chancellor, for vice president, and for dean. He was a member of our Senate for over 20 years, and he served on the Board of Regents as well, as chaired over a dozen committees. Throughout his career, Dr. Daniels has made an enduring commitment to the University of Winnipeg with dedication and contributions to teaching, scholarship, and self-governance. And I have to tell you as well that Bruce was a, an impassioned, uh, interested very much in the politics of uh, his day. And what you were looking at here is a man who once ran, this is the truth, for President of the United States. He's an American citizen, and he ran with passion and commitment, but he lost to somebody named Clinton. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University of Winnipeg, I request that you admit Dr. Bruce Daniels to fellowship in United College. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, I admit you, Bruce Daniels, to the fellowship in the United College with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. So I'm going to uh, use uh, presidential discretion to depart from the program for a minute. How would you all like to stand up for two or three minutes, get refreshed, take some fresh air in, turn around, do whatever you do to shake those issues? So I'm going to time you beginning now. Please take a break. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, folks, we're going to call convocation back to order. <laughs> okay, second call. <laughs> Okay, without uh, wanting to sound too commercial, let's just say I hope you enjoyed that pause of the refreshes along the way. Uh, last night at our convocation dinner, as I mentioned, we honored individuals who had given an enormous amount of dedication and service during a very tumultuous period, and it warranted the creation of a special honor called the 100th Convocation Awards. As I call out these individuals, I would ask them to remain standing and when the roll call is completed, I hope you would join me in acknowledging these individuals who give extraordinary above and beyond call of duty to this institution. Patrick Dean, Acting President, U of W 2003-4. Richard Graydon, Chairman of the Board of Regents, 2004. Frank Hector, Chair of Board of Regents, 98 to 2000. Sherman Kreiner, Board of Regents, 2000 to 2005. Margaret McPherson, Board of Regents, 97, 98, Margaret can't be with us this afternoon. Deborah Reddy, Chair of Board of Regents, 208, 210. Susan Thompson, Founding President and CEO of the U of W Foundation, 203, 211. Janet Walker, Executive Advanced Gifts for the University of Winnipeg Foundation, 2001 to 211. And Carol Wiley, Chair, Board of Regents, the U of W, 204, 206. A remarkable group of people. Please join me in thanking them for their work. Now, to recognize several prestigious and dedicated faculty and staff members, we have two awards that we want to provide. The first I would like to call on Dr. Marsha Hannon, President Emeritus. The title sounds pretty good, Marcia. To present to Mr. Philip Baker, the Director of the Faculty of Education Access Program, who is this year's recipient of the Martian Hedden Award for Creating Community Awareness. Dr. Hannon, please. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. Chancellor, before I carry out the very pleasant task assigned to me, I wanted to say that this is the first opportunity I've had since my retirement in 1999 to offer my sincere thanks both to the Board of Regents for establishing this award in my name and to the TD Bank for so generously funding it as my retirement gift from the bank's board. It is my great pleasure finally to be able to thank both the Regents and the bank in a public way. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present Phil Baker with the Marsha Hannon Award for Excellence in Creating Community Awareness. Okay. Oh, good. You're there. <laughs> I was going to ask him to stand, but he did it already. As director of U Winnipeg's Faculty of Education Access Program since 2003, Mr. Baker has created new pathways into post-secondary life for countless students, especially Aboriginal students and those from minority groups. He has found innovative ways to meet real student needs and helped ensure many students graduate and become successful teachers in our community. He has strengthened the academic rigor 
of the Winnipeg Education Center program developed to serve students in the inner city. Under his leadership, enrollment has been stabilized, retention rates have soared, and the hiring rate of graduates has increased dramatically. Mr. Baker has also developed and helped to expand other successful programs, including the community-based Aboriginal teacher education program, which allows educational assistants to work while studying part-time so they may become teachers in their own right. The program has expanded to service seven school divisions, including two First Nations communities. Mr. Baker has also grown the immigrant teacher education program which supports newcomers with teaching backgrounds in gaining the credentials needed to teach in Manitoba. He has fostered the Aboriginal post-secondary, sorry, post-baccalaureate program in education which helps build and support Aboriginal teachers' skill sets. Mr. Baker works with community groups on a regular basis and has delivered keynote addresses about U Winnipeg's access program around the world. He has also enhanced U Winnipeg's reputation through numerous publications. For his unwavering commitment to broader community inclusion in education, the University of Winnipeg is proud to present Phil Baker with the Marsha Hannon Award for Excellence in Creating Community Awareness. Well, congratulations, Phil. It's a highly deserved award. I'd now like to call upon Ms. Jennifer Ratray, Associate Vice President for Indigenous Government and Community Affairs, to introduce to you Ms. Jerry Zacharias, Acting Director of the Model School, as a recipient of the Clarence Atchison Award for Excellence in Community Service. But Ms. Ms. Ratray and Ms. Zacharias, please come to the podium. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Anin and Tansi, Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present Jerry Zacharias for the Clarence Atchison Award for Excellence in Community Service. Jerry Zacharias is a passionate and gifted educator and a role model and mentor to many. As acting director of the university's collegiate model school, Jerry sees the whole child and works with her students and their families and the community in partnership to overcome challenges and to focus on what is important, to focus on potential. The model school was created in 2008 in partnership with the community. It serves students from grades 9 to 12 who are identified as bright and capable but who have various barriers that could prevent them from reaching their full potential. Jerry has created a learning environment that is rigorous, inclusive, and supportive. She deeply cares, and her students and their families know this. Jerry is also an integral part of the university's popular EcoU summer camp, which to date has allowed more than 6,000 inner city children to attend fun, free science and environmental science day camps that prevent summer learning loss and support a child's natural curiosity. For her outstanding determination, compassion, and dedication to fostering the educational success of inner city youth, the University of Winnipeg proudly bestows upon her the Clarence Atchison Award for Excellence in Community Service. Ego se. Okay, we've now come to that part of the program that uh, the graduates and friends and family have been anticipating. The Registrar Colin Russell. That was a slight commentary, wasn't it? <laughs> Registrar Colin Russell will present the graduates. Our Chancellor, Robert Silver, will confer the degrees. 
parchments will be handed to the graduates by the dean or associate dean of their faculty. And each graduate will also be presented with a University of Winnipeg alumni pin by the past president of our alumni association, Reverend Stefan Johansson, and the president of the Students Association, Ms. Megan Fultz. If you look at your program at the very bottom, you will see that there's a special uh, registry for a certificate of completion. This is being awarded posthumously to Jenny Omelin. Jenny was a mature student who, after her own children came to the university, she decided that she would also make that important choice in her life. She died tragically a few months before she was able to complete her credits for a major in sociology. So the university has decided that to honor her commitment and her dedication and her belief in learning that we would award a certificate of completion to Miss Jenny Omelin and I believe her daughter Karen who is a 79 graduate of U of W uh, will join the graduates to accept the award on behalf of her mother. So please acknowledge I think uh, women of great courage. So this is the occasion for our celebration, and I want to invite uh, all family and friends who have been so helpful along the way to feel free to express their admiration for graduates or any particular graduate as they cross the platform and receive the degrees. I'd now like to call in Mr. Russell and Chancellor Silver, please, to award degrees and certificate to our graduating class. And one word, just there is a a new group of students joining us, two advanced degrees, a master's degree in development, which is part of a network of 22 universities around the world. The first graduates of that class will be receiving their degrees today, as will be those who will be providing a degree in the Master's of Arts in Natural Resource and Economics. So we welcome these new degree granters to the body of students receiving degrees. Please. All right. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Russell, your time has come. <laughs> Would the graduates from the class of 2013 please rise as their degree is called and remain standing while the other degrees are announced. Master of Marriage and Family Therapy. Master of Arts. Masters in Development Practice. Master of Science. Master of Arts joined with the University of Manitoba. Master of Public Administration joined with the University of Manitoba. Bachelor of Science Honors. Bachelor of Science Four Year. Bachelor of Science. Post Baccalaureate Diploma in Education. Bachelor of Education. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts Honors. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts Four Year. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Bachelor of Business Administration. Bachelor of Arts Honors in Economics. Bachelor of Arts Four Year in Economics. Bachelor of Science Four Year in Kinesiology. Bachelor of Physical and Health Education. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of the University of Winnipeg, I request you to confer upon these candidates and upon those receiving their degrees in absentia the degree for which they have qualified. By virtue of the authority vested in me as Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg, 
I admit those present and those receiving degrees in absentia to the degrees for which the prescribed studies have been completed with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. You are now graduates of the University of Winnipeg. Please shift your cap tassels to the left to indicate your accomplishment. Thank you. You may be seated. Mr. Chancellor, I beg leave to present the graduates from the class of 2013 for congratulations. Receiving the Master of Marriage and Family Therapy degree, Catherine Ruth East. Jasmine Sarah Willinger Finch. Ken Martin Genlick. Marie Frances Hunter. <laughs> Sophia Lizagorski. Margaret Dirksen. And now the recipients of the Master of Arts degree, Abigail Elizabeth McLeod Auld. Alan Beaudry. Angeliki Bugiazzi. Megan Amanda Chorney. Leona Marlene Herzog. Lisa Dawn Kaler. Devon Driver Kerslake. Alexandra Michelle Kruger. <laughs> Marie Leanne Rennard. Josina Janes Robb. Samuel Swanson. Lucas Benjamin Thiessen.
Brendan Yerish. And now the graduates of the Masters in Development Practice degree. Tatenda Ethel Bwawa. Alejandro Eduardo Dominguez Suberbe. Ruben Mayen Garang. Kirsten Yunker Anderson. Chinyama Lizu. Susan Marie Maxson. <laughs> Megan Stephanie Pryden. Ian Robert Toll. And now the graduates of the Master of Science degree, Shamsul Hawk. Kaylee Joanna Olson Norquay. Krista Lee Rigney. And now the graduates of the Master of Arts program joint with the University of Manitoba, Sarah Nora Foley Riley. Timothy Matthew Johnson. And now the graduates of the Master of Public Administration degree, joint with the University of Manitoba, Andrea Grenoll. Christina von Schindler. Now the graduates of the Bachelor of Science Honors degree, Daniel Murray Applin. <laughs> Alistair Kendrick Brown. James Kep. Leah Schellenberg. And the graduates of the Bachelor of Science four-year degree, Krista Filomeno. The graduates of the Bachelor of Science degree, 
Kelly Ann Charco. Juanita Duick. Ian Lyndon Griffin. Nada Idris. James Thomas Irvin. Juliana Louise Knott. Vera Nikulina. Apawe Utuwama. <laughs> Leslie Laurie Quintos. John Larlinson Rebenka. Danica Pearl Semchishin. Deepak Sharma. Now the graduates of the post-baccalaureate diploma in education, Lindsay Dora Brown. Dana Ellen Gibbons. Darcy Gibbons. Jennifer Hall. Julia Candace Cron. Fortunato Lim. Elaine Mayham. Marsha Holly Missyabit. Chander Prabha. Heather Martins Rempel. Ruth Samuel. Ryan Patrick Smithson. Kevin Lee Tominek. And now the graduates of the Bachelor of Education degree, Kimberly Ann Colasar Angus. <laughs> Pamela Dawn Bowen. Hello. 
Andrea Aldous Delisle. Tara Lynn Marie Ewanchuk. Ariel Therese Garon. Libya Ruth Glue. Sandra Irene McGlynn. Lee Anthony Pollock. Janelle Natalie Prairie. Antonio Scarpino. Ruby Lynn Tagaro. Now the graduates of the Bachelor of Arts Honors Degree, Shanice Berger. Teddy Chow. Christopher Clements. Amanda Ray Coldwell. Jeffrey McCarthy Davis. Rémi Maurice Fontaine. Acacia Barbara Humniski. Lovey Jassison. Lee James Kelly McMillan. Jeffrey Anthony Edward Kovalik Plouffe. Amanda Jane Christensen. Christian John Kuchta. Charles Nelson Lowen. Justin Otto. Courtney Sam Penner. Gabrielle Peterson.
Jessica Elizabeth Prosnick. Scott Joseph Price. Brittany Margaret Thiessen. Jennifer Weger. Tiao Chun Wu. And now the graduates of the Bachelor of Arts four year program Larissa Jean Saunders Barr. Bethany Amber Berard. Corey Robert Patrick Christensen. Alan Harvey Edward Cochran. Shauna Fontaine. <laughs> Lee Failer, who is also receiving the Advanced Certificate in Public Policy and Administration. <laughs> Mitchell Joseph Francoeur. Robert William Galston. Dana Caroline Sherry Mackey. The gray stole indicates that the student is also a graduate of Menno Simons College. Andre Theodore No. Brianna K. Pirelli. <laughs> Melissa Don Romano. <laughs> Danielle Elena Unet. Now the graduates of the Bachelor of Arts degree, Abiol Makar Akao. <laughs> Stephanie Ann Allen. <laughs> Anna Burchenko. Scott William Gerald Campbell. Elizabeth Carty. Jade Marie Chimmy. Corrine Margaret Jane Klein. <laughs> Vivian Combiadakis. <laughs> Jenna Catherine Arwen Croston.
Marina Erin Cutler. Carly Nicole Dolsky. Laura Diane. Devin Gerard Decos. Christian Taylor Fielding. Casey Lynn Fields. Sarah Catherine Fournier. Karen Marie Furtado. Real Joseph Mozart Gauthier. Carly Gerard. Joshua Carl Henry Ginter. Justin Curtis Holland. Jessica Lynn Luciel Jones. Victoria Maria Karras. Laman Sadie Khan. Carly Marie Luadniak. Robert James Light. Brittany Laura Lasciavo. Brittany Diana Magus. Chun Long Mac. Heather Lorraine Reimer Mathis. <laughs> Caitlin Ann McIntosh. Crystal Lorraine Meixner. Allison Kate Miller. Irena Moskaliuk. Jonathan William Robert Murray. Woo! 
Du Nguyen. Rebecca Aaron Oshawi. Amy Michelle Palmquist. Alexa May Parker. Emily Ann Payne. Sebastian Wesley Prasky. Christopher Constantinos Razos. Eric Matthew Reed. Jory Lynn Reimer. Brendan Lloyd Roney. Allison Nicole Shane. Angela Mary Jean St. Mars. Amy Wilson. Leanne Elizabeth Dawn Wilton. Nadine Kara Zossa. Now the graduates of the Bachelor of Business Administration four-year degree. Carlin Leslie Bell. Veronica Evelyn Clark. Ashan Kumara Desanayaki. <laughs> Stephanie Fair. <laughs> Kazuko Magara. Arthur Joseph Neo. <laughs> David Tan Noyen. <laughs> True New. Michael Robert Proudly. Vidur Sharma. Kelsey May Shuchuk. Tristan Stuthers. <laughs> Olesia Sarak. <laughs> 
Yan Yan. Shu Zhao. Habiba Amor Jen Ali. Bonnie Elizabeth Alvarez Mancia. Chrismari Vallejo Basco. The recipients of the Bachelor of Business Administration degree, Dolores Beardy. Colby William Charles. Hui Jing Li. Zhu Yuan Yang. Alain Nicolette Marchand. Caitlin Madidi. Terry Lynn O'Brien. Morgan Prendergast. Nicole Jessica Ritchie. Nandini Singh. Shannon Amber Joy Sumner, who is also receiving a Bachelor of Arts degree. Vikram Verma. Amara Wahid. The recipients of the Bachelor of Arts four year degree in economics, Igor Yudovenko. Recipient of the Bachelor of Arts in Economics, Hui Guang Han. Now the graduates from the Faculty of Kinesiology for the, receiving the Bachelor of Science four year in Kinesiology, Ian Foster Fraser. Florent Tézard. <laughs> Jessica Dawn Book Thomas. And the first recipient of our new uh, Bachelor of Physical and Health Education, Julie Lauren Robertson. I'd like to mention again at this point, um, Jennifer Omelon receiving the Certificate of Completion.
Ladies and gentlemen, the fall 2013 graduating class. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chancellor and uh, Mr. Russell, and congratulations to the graduating class. We have a few more small presentations, important ones to make, so I'd like to invite Ms. Laurel Rebsky, our Vice President for Human Resources and Sustainability, to introduce Ms. Leslie Uriniak, recipient of the Campus Sustainability Recognition Award. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present Leslie Uriniak with the Campus Sustainability Recognition Award. In her role as Manager of Print Services, Leslie has been instrumental in University of Winnipeg's success in exceeding our sustainability goals with respect to recycled paper usage on campus. Her goal was to move from 30% post-consumer paper to 50%, and instead, her work ensured a transition from virgin paper to 100% recycled uh, stationery and paper on campus. That means that we are now saving the equivalent of about 1,389 trees each year. In addition, she was a key member of the team which selected and rolled out the current fleet of printing and photocopying machines at the university, which is saving about 24,263 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. So a significant contribution to our sustainability goals. So for her strong commitment to sustainable practices, the University of Winnipeg is proud to honor Leslie Ureniak with the Campus Sustainability Recognition Award. Okay, I'd like now to introduce to you Reverend Stefan Jonansson, past president of the Alumni Association, to present the University of Winnipeg's Distinguished Alumni Award and to welcome graduates to the Alumni Association. Stefan. It is my great honor to present the University of Winnipeg Alumni Association's Distinguished Alumni Award, which honors graduates of this university and its predecessor colleges who have distinguished themselves in either their chosen profession or in the community. Today's recipient, Michael Newell Mayen, has done both. That's you. <laughs> Michael is a dedicated helper, an advocate and friend to new Canadians, among them immigrants, refugees, young people, and those who have been affected by war. His own life experiences have instilled within him a passionate desire to help all newcomers find support, assistance, education, and success in their adopted country of Canada. Michael was born and raised in Sudan, in the region now known as South Sudan. And in 1986, at the age of 12, he was forced to flee his country due to war 
and become part of a group known around the world as the Lost Boys and Girls of Sudan. As orphans displaced by war, lost boys and girls were forced to walk thousands of miles to seek refuge in neighboring nations like Ethiopia and Kenya. As one of the fortunate few lucky enough to survive, Michael came to Winnipeg as a government-sponsored refugee in 1998. He attended this fine university and graduated in 2007 with a four-year degree in International Development Studies. During his time here, he co-founded the Lost Boys and Girls of Sudan and founded the African Students Association, for which he served as president from 2004 to 2007. He also, he was also the Global Action Coordinator for Menno Simons College. In 2006, he traveled to the Democratic Republic of Congo as a national election observer with the help of Dr. Lloyd Axworthy, former Minister of Foreign Affairs and current President and Vice Chancellor of the University of Winnipeg. In 2010, Michael demonstrated his belief in the democratic process when he became the first of these global migrants to run for a political seat. He ran for a councillor seat in the city of Brooks, Alberta. While he lost that election, his run was inspiring to many new Canadians as well as longtime residents of this great nation, and one day he will triumph. Volunteering and working with agencies serving immigrants, Michael has advocated for and assisted newcomers to Canada in Manitoba and Alberta, helping them to integrate into Canadian society. He currently serves as the Executive Director of the Language Center for Newcomers in Brooks, Alberta, an organization that he himself founded. He also volunteers his speaking in schools, acting as an Arabic and Dinka language translator in court hearings for non-English speaking newcomers and serving on boards of community organizations. Michael Newell Mayan, congratulations on being named the distinguished alumnus of the University of Winnipeg. I was almost hesitant as the speeches went on to think that I was going to be bringing you greetings as well. But when Dr. Axworthy, ever a pioneering soul, granted you recess, I knew that you would be, that you would be refreshed and that you would leave here today knowing that you had experienced not only the 100th convocation of this great university, but that you had been here at the beginning of a new tradition that will last through the ages. <laughs> and so it is my privilege this afternoon to congratulate each of you on your graduation and to welcome you into membership in the University of Winnipeg Alumni Association on behalf of our current president, Vasan Arljothi, and the entire Alumni Council. You join a growing procession of graduates who have successfully undertaken and completed a rigorous program of studies, recognized by the degree that you've received, and you can be proud of your accomplishment. On each of my own degree parchments from this university, immediately following the name of the degree itself is the curious expression, with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. While it turns out that the rights and privileges are fewer than you would imagine, one of them is the alumni pin you received, 
But the list does include membership in the Alumni Association and a welcome to return. Your Alumni Association hopes that you will remain connected to the university through its varied activities. Your graduation marks a milestone in your learning, but it does not necessitate that you vacate or abandon the institution where your learning took place. I returned myself four times to study here after the first time, collecting the signatures of three presidents and three different chancellors on my own degrees something that are more valuable than baseball trading cards. So feel free to return yourself often and involve yourself in whatever activities catch your fancy in these familiar halls and spaces. Nurture the friendships you develop here and keep them alive. As you go out into the world bearing your new degree, I hope that you will consider the time you spent here at the university to have been not only preparation for life's adventure, but a vital part of the adventure itself. For your studies here have been not merely, not merely a means to an end, but an integral part of the richness of your life, which I trust you will look back upon with fondness and appreciation. The philosopher John Dewey said, the imagination is the medium of appreciation in every field. Whatever else you may have learned, I hope that you have been inspired to be imaginative in all that you do. So while your alumni colleagues wish you every success and satisfaction in life, we hope that the power of your imagination will bring dignity and honor to this university through lives of vision and purpose, risk and creativity, dedication and service. You leave here as graduates, but the adventure of learning continues, for it is a lifelong affair, and the world awaits your unique gifts and contributions. Welcome again. Well, thank you, Stefan, and uh, congratulations, Michael. Stefan, you soon have a chance to get a fourth signature if you want to work on it. But, uh, okay, the last and in some ways the most important voice is given to the students. It is their day, and so I would like to invite Miss Allie Miller to the platform. And I just got a tweet to say that I made a mistake. Nope, I didn't acknowledge that Allie is a great, great granddaughter of John M. King. So we're having a sort of a double treat today. Allie is your valedictorian for this class of 2013. Allie Miller. I, uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging Chancellor Robert Silver, President and Vice Chancellor, the Honorable Lloyd Axworthy, distinguished guests, the Board of Regents, members of the Senate, deans, faculty, staff, friends, family, and the graduating class of the Autumn Convocation of 2013. I'd also like to extend my congratulations to the university's honorees, award recipients, and graduates. It is a huge honor to be here today, uh, representing the 100th class to graduate from the University of Winnipeg. I have to say it was pretty difficult for me to get over the initial shock of having been asked. Pretty sure I called two, maybe three times to see if they could double check that they didn't make a mistake with uh, getting the wrong name. I assume that, uh, with no one admitting that they had made a mistake, I assume the selection criteria now includes awarding points to the graduate who has taken the longest time completing their degree. 
In any event, I'm thrilled to be here today to say congratulations to my fellow graduates. Today marks a milestone for many of us, particularly those whose road here has been far from straight and far from smooth. To our family and friends, thank you for your support, your patience, and your encouragement. Thank you for reminding us that the stress was worth it and that we could handle it. We are grateful to have discovered in us, with your help, the motivation and determination to continue to work at something even when we don't really know why we are, as we know that this is something we will need in the future. Thank you to our teachers. The education we have received here is a gift, a gift that we know not everyone has the opportunity to receive. Thank you for fostering our curiosity, for challenging us, for opening us up to new ideas, and for your willingness to learn with and from all of us. We leave here today confident enough to have opinions that we feel we can share, and wise enough, we hope, to know that we don't always need to. For many of us, being a student at the U of W has deepened our desire to contribute to our community, both local and global, in a positive way. We have learned the value of admitting that we don't know, for it's when we acknowledge that we don't know that we are truly able to learn. Because of this, we can see how meaningful change in our communities will only be possible when we can set aside our egos and build on our collective knowledge and experience. We are also able to see how a person's value, their intelligence, and their wisdom is not determined by how many letters may appear at the end of their name, but instead determined by a person's integrity, their ability to listen, to learn, to reflect, and to consider. All important skills that our education here has offered us, and for this we are deeply thankful. On a day with so much focus on formal academic achievement, I'd like to invite all of us to also consider the teachers who we've had outside of the class and realize that some of the most brilliant teachers we've had and hopefully will have may never have, may never have graduated high school or attended a university class. We will leave here today proud of our accomplishments, grateful for all of our teachers and humble we're humbled with the realization that, for th that thousands of students have sat, as we do today, likely wrestling with the same feelings we are as we contemplate what it means for this chapter of our life to be closing and another to be opening. Those of us looking ahead with a bit of anxiety, wondering what the road is going to look like, where it ought to be leading, can take comfort in knowing that we are not alone. And we can remind ourselves that none of us knew what the road here would look like. I had no idea that the road here would take me nine years, for example. Our education has taught us to embrace what we don't know and has shown us that we are capable of more than we think. So we can feel confident in our ability to take on whatever challenge may appear on the road ahead, wherever that road may be leading. I'd like to close today by returning to that sense of gratitude by taking a moment to acknowledge that each one of us is here today because someone believed in us. All of us, whatever stage of life, need someone to believe in us. We don't need many, but we need at least one. I hope that all of us today can take a moment to consider what a tremendous gift that belief has been in our life. In my life, when I was trying to figure out what to do after taking a year off from high school, I was suffering from pretty serious self-doubt and insecurities that led me to be pretty confident that university just wouldn't be in the cards for me. One day, not really sure why or when, but I was at the U of W when a man who was and is a prof here uh, started to talk to me. Don't recall if he had any reason to talk to me, probably didn't, and certainly had no reason to believe in me. But in those two minutes that we talked, uh, he conveyed a belief in me that for some reason I trusted, even though I, I didn't have a lot of belief in myself, if any. Because of that two-minute conversation, I registered at the UW, and because of that two-minute conversation, I'm standing here today. 
I'm sure that this particular individual has had a similar impact on hundreds of other students and probably has no idea until I find him after this ceremony to tell him and also to thank him. Many of you, no doubt, have had a similar experience. So I hope that we can all walk out of here today knowing that this is a gift we can so easily share and by doing so we can change people's lives. Congratulations again, class of 2013. I hope the road ahead is filled with curiosity, compassion, some fight, and a whole lot of love and laughter. Thank you. Ellie, thank you for those very fine words. And then, if I could just pick up on a theme that she struck in her valedictory address about the importance of others in helping to people move along their own pathways. One of the traditions that we have here is to invite our graduating class to reciprocate, to return. And I know that in this hallway, there's families and friends who have all been part of your success and your achievement. So I'd ask the members of the graduating class if they would like to stand and turn in whichever direction they think is appropriate and thank friends and families for the help and support they've given over the years. Please, to our family and friends and their achievements. Okay, so we're now uh, on the last segment of the last lap. I just want to express some thank yous. First to our Chief Marshal, Dr. Ed Byard, who uh, helped everything just move along very smoothly. And to all the marshals and ushers, uh, you can sit now. I'm not sure how long I'm going to go on with these thank yous. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> to the uh, head ushers, Lynn Jones, and Marilyn Working Team, to our wonderful interpreters, Ms. Horvath and Mr. Klein, thank you very much for your help. It's been wonderful. To Dr. Terry Hidichuk and Elder Lavina Brown for their prayers. The organist, Barry Anderson, wonderful members of the pipe band who make a contribution to our convocation ceremonies. Our stage assistant today, Paula Hossack. Thank you, Paula, for your great work. Many members of the staff who organized this event and to the faculty of the university for placing students first and for embodying the pursuit of excellence to which we are still committed. And one just footnote thank you to Keith Bellamy, who is our director of events, who helped kind of quarterback all this. Keith is leaving for another posting in another place, not that other place, another kind of folk singing place. Uh, Keith has done a great job for us. Keith, thank you very much. Please join me all in thanking these folks. Uh, uh, and finally, a thanks to our Chancellor, Mr. Robert Silver, for his support for the university and his incredible advice and uh, uh, words of encouragement when they're needed. And finally, thanks to our graduates for making us proud. To all of you, our guests, for joining us on this, our 100th convocation. Following this ceremony, I hope you will join us across the mall, the Spence Street Mall in Riverdale Hall to sort of uh, talk over and uh, get ready for the celebrations that continue tonight. So thank you all, and please would you rise for the singing of the national anthem led by our registrar, Colin Russell, calling the national anthem. Remain standing for the retirement of the platform party and academic process.
stand on God for 